Building a no-code SaaS business can be a very exciting venture, especially with the plethora of no-code tools that are on the market today. They'll allow you to create a no-code SaaS business without writing a single line of code. In today's video, I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step outline of how you can create a no-code SaaS business, and I'm even going to give you tools that you can use for each step along the way. Without further ado, let's jump right in. The first step to creating a no-code SaaS business is ideation and market research. You want to find a problem that is worth solving. The easiest way to do this is to use Google Trends or exploding topics. This will allow you to see how search history is moving and what people are currently asking. So you can start by using Google Trends to gauge ideas or you can also start by evaluating your own day-to-day -day life. And as you go through your routine, try and identify different areas that could have potential problems that could easily be solved by the use of a software. If you then couple this with Google Trends and Exploding Topics, and then in addition to that, try and use your friends, family, neighbors for some market validation, then you're in a good place to understand whether or not what you're trying to solve is actually something that others would use. And you always wanna make sure that before you start and commit developing something, that the market is something that's expanding, the market has a need for more solutions, and in the best case scenario, there's not something that already exists that would make your solution, your software, or your no-code SaaS business obsolete. As an example, let's say I search up best programming language of 2024 on Google Trends, and it is currently trending. And upon further research, I realize that it's something that trends every single year around the beginning of the year. So January, let's say I decide that I think this is a great problem that I need to solve. I've done my research and there are no articles or blogs that can efficiently and effectively answer this question year after year with the most up-to-date information. So I decide that I'm going to create a no-code SaaS business that will allow users to not only understand what the current best programming language to use is, will also give free resources, tutorials, and sample projects all in one place. I've talked to my colleagues, my family, my friends, and Everyone seems to be on board and says that this is something that they would use. My next step would be to define, define my value proposition. Essentially, why would people want to use my product? What makes it unique and why would customers choose it over competitors? So this part is twofold because either there are many competitors or no competitors. So let's say in my case, there are no competitors. I could create a social media campaign using Canva to create some video or a slideshow that outlines and details everything that my software provides and how the main differentiating factor is that you get all of the information for the best programming language in one place and it's always updated. It's the, it's the one place that you can go to year after year that will tell you what the best programming language to learn currently is and what you can use that language for in what industry. And in addition to this, provides resources and tutorials and it's all free. And not only does it give you the best programming language currently on the market, but it will also give you details and insight into other programming languages and what they're good for. And I know what you're thinking, a no-code SaaS business that's completely free don't worry about the free part because you can always make your no-code SaaS business free to access and then offer premium features that would be paid. Quick interruption, my name is Sophie. I go by Code by Sophie on all social platforms and I make tech content with the goal of democratizing tech and lowering the barrier of entry into tech. So if you support this mission, make sure you like and subscribe. And without further ado, let's get into the next step. So after you've done your ideation and market research, as well as your value proposition, the next step is to design your SaaS application. And this can be done in Figma or Adobe or Whimsical. And these tools essentially allow you to figure out what your app is going to look like aesthetically. But in addition to this, create a wireframe that will kind of act as what the workflow of your app is going to be or your software is going to be. 
After you have your wireframe, your UI UX design essentially, the next step is to choose a no-code platform that is best suited for your use case for your no-code SaaS business. I will preface this by saying that there are a plethora of no-code platforms out there and I think that every single platform has a great use case. Some platforms are great for one thing but maybe not other things so really take this into consideration when you are deciding which platform to go for and if you need help in deciding leave a comment below and tell me what your use case is and I can try and help you figure out which no code platform is best suited for you. All that said here are some guidelines that will ultimately help you choose which no code platform is the best for your no code SaaS business. If you're not interested in creating a native mobile application and your software as a service requires complex applications requiring a database, custom workflows, and a little bit more dynamic functionalities, Bubble would be the perfect no code platform for your use case. If you're looking for a native mobile application that is user friendly, and kind of easy to understand and you're not looking to scale too much, Adalo would be the perfect no-code platform for your use case. Let's say your no-code SaaS business is mainly a web application with a strong emphasis on design, then you should take a look into Webflow as they offer some really great functionalities for web applications. So if that's something you're interested in, then Webflow would be the best for your particular no-code SaaS business. And lastly, if you're looking for a progressive web application, essentially it can be ran on your phone, but also on a desktop or a tablet. It will change depending on the device that you are running it on. Essentially a, progress, a progressive web app that runs inside the data browser. You're looking for quick development, and you really just want a UI and you want to be able to interact with data on the back end, I would say that Glide would be a really great option for your use case. The next step is to build your MVP or your minimal viable product. Essentially, you will be creating a simplified version of your no-code SaaS business, aka your application, which will include mainly the core features that are necessary to solve your particular problem or meet the essential need of what you have identified. The point of this is to gain a little bit more feedback before going all in into full blown development. You can use Typeform or Google Forms to collect user feedback as you send out your MVP to family, friends, or attach it to the social media campaign that you created earlier with your value proposition. This step is technically not necessary, but I highly recommend it to really foolproof and validate that your product and your idea is something that is actually needed and will be used by users. So let's say for my programming, best programming language, no code SaaS business, I decided that I was going to use Adalo because I just wanted a quick mobile app that people could download to allow them to understand what the best programming language for them is in the current year and what they could use it for. At this point, I would try to circulate that app to see how many people actually used it and actually needed it and actually find it useful. And depending on if the user feedback is positive or negative, I would move on to the next step, which is to test and iterate to essentially make it better and make any necessary adjustments to really craft it into the best no code SaaS business or solution possible. But if let's say in the MVP stage, things don't really go well and it's not needed and it seems like it could be a waste of time. At that point, I've saved myself a lot of time and money and I could just abandon and start from the very beginning and try and find something different that would possibly be a better no-code SaaS business to try and start. But for my business, my no-code SaaS business, let's say that it was a complete success and my best programming language app completely took off. At this stage, I would wanna understand how I can set up a business model to monetize and create this no-code SaaS business in turn it into an actual business that produces money. Some common business models are subscription-based, freemium, or transaction fees. 
So for my case, for my best programming language app, I decided that I wanted to make it freemium. So essentially to access the app and understand what the best programming language for you currently is, it would be completely free. But let's say you have more specific questions or let's say you need help on a very specific thing, then maybe I could introduce paid features that would allow you to have access to a professional that could help you answer your questions a little bit more detailed and further. And the next step is to launch your no code SaaS business and make it available to your target audience. You can do this through product hunt for launching in particular to the tech community. You can use MailChimp for marketing, email marketing, social media to run campaigns, reach out to influencers to integrate your no code SaaS software solution into their regular content to kind of make it a little bit more organic and really just see what needs arise from you going live with your no code SaaS business. So after you've launched your no code SaaS business, the next step is to scale it, scale and expand. You want to look for opportunities that could make your app reach a wider audience or offer features that would essentially make your product a more complete solution if it currently isn't. So in my example for the best programming language app, currently it will give you the best programming language for you, use cases, free resources, it has some paid features, but maybe we integrate a community feature that will allow you to interact with other people on the on the app. In addition to that, maybe we can create some feature that allows users to upload tutorials on how to create projects in certain languages. So the opportunities are really endless and you want to see what the what your target audience and what your user base is doing with the app and really keep a pulse on what features they might be requesting. Keep in mind that when you create software, it will constantly be improving and constantly be expanding and scaling as technologies change and evolve, as user needs change and evolve. So this is really a forever project when you decide to create a no-code SaaS business. By following these steps and leveraging the appropriate tools, you can navigate the process of building and launching a successful no-code SaaS business with strategic insight and confidence. And I want you to remember that the key to a successful no-code SaaS business lies in your understanding of the target market, continuously making it better and evolving it as technology and your users evolve and effectively utilizing the wide range of no-code tools to be able to bring your vision to life. Also keep in mind, even if you yourself don't have the time to learn these no-code SaaS tools to create your no-code SaaS business, in general, using no-code software platforms takes half the time for development and a lot of the time, half the cost of traditional development. So if this is something that you're interested in outsourcing, make sure you email me or leave a comment and I will make sure to help you out and I will catch you guys in the next video.